Leibniz actually introduced the notion of a conditional probability. Why do we, uh, why, why do we have to learn about conditional probability? Because most of the times or very often we are interested in determining probabilities when some partial information concerning the experiment is available. So, let us understand it through an example. Let me have the experiment of rolling a dice twice. I am assuming this dice is fair in the sense that we know that it is a six sided dice. So, if I throw it once the sample spaces, I can have any one of the outcomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I again assume all the outcomes are equally likely to happen. We introduce what we mean by equally likelihood and this means that the probability of this one happening is the same as probability of 2 happening which is the same as probability of each of the outcomes happening equally likely which is going to be 1 by 6. So, now suppose I toss a coin twice I or sorry. So, now suppose I am tossing or rolling this dice twice. Okay. So, what are the outcomes? So, the again the experiment is to roll this fair dice twice. My sample space in this case is going to be, so if I, my first toss is a 1, my second roll is also a 1, first is a 1, my second could be a 2, my second could be a, my first toss could be a 1, my second could be a 3, my first toss could be a 4, my second could be a 5, my first toss could be a 5, my second could be a 1. So, you can see that the set of possible outcomes comes is with every first toss. So, I have the first, so I can depict this in this way, the outcome of first toss, the outcome of a first toss could be any one of this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now, if my first toss is a 1, the second toss could again be, so if I have second toss, it could be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. With 2 also I could have a 1. So, this final outcome of the experiment is 1, 1. This is 1, 2. This is 1, 3. This is a 1, 4. This is a 1, 5. This is a 1, 6. Similarly, with each one of these outcomes, so with 6 I could have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a 6. So, this outcome corresponds to 6, 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5 and 6, 6. So, you can see with each one I have 6 more outcomes and that gives me a total of 36 outcomes in my sample space. Each outcome is equally likely to happen. I have 36 outcomes. So, each of these outcomes are equally likely to happen with the probability of 1 by 36. Now, suppose further I know that the first roll of the dice lands in a 4. Okay. So, what are the chances? So, what are the outcomes? So, this you can see that these outcomes correspond to the first roll being a 4. How many outcomes do I have here? I have 6 outcomes and these 6 outcomes of these 36 outcomes actually correspond to the outcome that the first roll is a 4. So, I want to know that given that the first outcome is a or first roll is a 4, what is the chance of the resulting probability that the sum or what is the chance that the sum of the dice is a 10. So, if I know that the first outcome is a 4, let me define the event f to be 4 1, 4 2, 
4, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5 and 4, 6. So, what is given to us? The information that is given to us is F has occurred. Okay, this is the partial information that has been given to us is F has occurred. So, given this information, so given this information, I want to know what is the chance that sum of dice is equal to 10. Okay, that is the question which we are asking. Given that the first roll is a 4, what is the chance that the sum is equal to a 10? Okay, so if an outcome of a finite sample space. What is the finite sample space we consider here? I have 36 outcome. So, if an outcome of a finally finite sample space is equally likely, then conditional on the event that the lies in a subset F, the outcomes in F are also equally likely. So, if I am conditioning it on this event, the outcomes of this event or this subset are also equally e likely. So, conditioned on what I refer to as a restricted sample space, what is a restricted sample space? I have this full sample space, but I am not interested in all these outcomes here. I am only interested in those outcomes that are favorable to this event that the first roll is a 4. Okay? And I am looking at these events also being equally likely. Now, within this restricted sample space, you can see that the outcome that satisfies that the sum of dice is 10 is this outcome. And what is the chance of that? Assuming all the outcomes here are equally likely, in this space I have 6 outcomes of which one of the outcome satisfies this event giving me a probability of 1 by 6. So, you can see that the probability of E given F can be obtained by this logic as 1 by 6. So, among the outcomes in the restricted sample space, since the outcomes in the restricted sample space are also equally likely. I have 6 outcomes in my restricted sample space. I can say that the probability of sum of dice is equal to 10 is 1 by 6. So, now let us come to a formal formula for the conditional probability. Now, what do we have here? If E denotes the event that the sum of dice is 10, so this is the event on which I am conditioning or this is the conditioning event okay? and let F denote the event that the first die lands on a 4. So, I am interested in knowing what is the conditional probability of E given that F has occurred. I denote that by probability E conditioned on F. I repeat, I write that or denote it as probability of E conditioned on F. Please remember that this is not a division symbol. It is not E divided by F or it should not be told E by F. Always practice yourself to articulate it as probability of E conditioned on F or probability E given F. So, what is this probability E given F? What is the formula for this probability? The probability of an event E occurring given that an F occurring is given by probability E intersection F divided by probability f and we know that this is defined if I have probability f is greater than 0 or in other words I always condition on a non-null event. So, the conditional probability formula is probability E conditioned on f is equal to probability E intersection f divided by probability 
f for probability f is greater than 0. So, now let us understand it through a Venn diagram. We also saw that Venn diagrams illustrate the concept of probability well. So, suppose I have a sample space and I have two events E and F which are subsets of my sample space. Now, I am interested in knowing, so this is my E event and this is my F event. So, the green portion is my E intersection F. Okay. Now, the way I can view this is, suppose I want to know what is the chance of E happening given F has happened. So, I can look at this. So, this green portion is the portion of your entire pink portion. Entire pink portion is F occurrence. Okay. And this E portion, this actually this shaded green portion is the chance of E occurring because given F has occurred, pink portion is F occurring, the green portion is the chance of E occurring given F has occurred and we can see that that green portion is nothing but E intersection F. So, the probability of E intersection F to probability of F, this green portion to the entire pink portion is my probability of E conditioned on F. That is one way of visualizing the conditional probability formula. So, now let us apply the formula to the example that we have stated. The example was again here we check the preceding formula. So, what is it we are interested in knowing? I have this event f which is the event that the first dice lands on a 4 and I know the outcomes of this experiment are 4 of this event is 4 1, 4 2, 4 3, 4 4, 4 5 and 4 6. Now, the probability of this f is 6 outcomes, all of them are equally likely. Again, recall this is going to be 6 over 36, which is my 1 by 6. Now, let E be the event that the sum is 10, and I know the events or the outcomes that satisfy this are 4, 6. 5, 5 and 6, 4. These are the 3 events that satisfy that the sum is equal to 10. I can see that those events here are, the outcomes here are this outcome. So, I can write down that these 3 outcomes are the outcomes that satisfy my event E and this are my e outcomes that satisfy my event that the first roll is a and we can see that the intersection of these two events is this outcome which is 4, 6. So, if you if we define E to be the event which has the so, you can see that E intersection F is my outcome which is 4, 6 and the probability of E intersection F is the same as the probability of this outcome 4, 6 happening which is 1 by 36. Again, I am assuming all my outcomes are equally likely. Probability of F we have already computed it to be 6 by 36. So, by applying the conditional probability formula, this is going to be 1 by 36 by 6 by 36, which is 1 by 6, which is what we obtained when we restricted the sample space and assumed that the outcomes of the restricted sample space are also equally likely and computed the probability.